Today I want to talk about uh, MIDI Guitar 3 transposer and retuner alternatives. Let's say you want to play along to an album of Best of uh, Paco Lucia. I can almost promise you that you'll get a lot of tunes in different tuning where the A is 440 on one track and perhaps 420 on another track and you will have a hard time sort of playing along because it's gonna sound bad. The obvious choice here is to go to the transposer. It transposes everything as a whole, up or down in octaves or semitones and in scents. Then you're gonna have to dial in where you are on the scents tuning in that particular song. But that's the first and easiest way of sort of getting to grips with a physical environment that doesn't perhaps measure up to the perfection of what is the digital world with the perfect 440A or whatever you're using. More interesting perhaps is if you're gonna play along to some exotic tuning. Let's say you have a friend with an instrument that doesn't conform to this 12 tone equal temperament that we normally use for almost everything. Let's go to the retuner. For this imaginary example, I will use my Modart Piano Tech classical uh, guitar. It's a nylon string. And it's in full MPE mode right now. So I have these polyphonic bands. This is what enables me to retune this guitar to something else than standard tuning. So what I want to do now is to just fix two or three pitches here to close in on something that would be in tuning in another instrument. It's totally imaginary. I'll open the MIDI machines here and I'll go into the retuning module here. And let's say for the argument's sake that I want to have my major seven be slightly higher. So grab the note handle and drag it to exactly where you want it. A bit sharper. I can even stretch all the way up to the next C, but then I'll get a double note. And I want to make this change so that you'll hear that these are different notes. And perhaps I want to have a little sharp 6 as well. Or this is a sharp minus 6. Maybe I want to remove the regular 6 here. And the way to do it is to grab it by the handle and pull it to the middle of the retuning circle here and we don't hear anything from that note. I want this to be closer to what was the six, but not fully there. So you hear it's out of tune for our Western ears. And let's say I want to remove stuff like the minor second and the minor third, for instance. I'll just move those to the middle again and I'll have myself a fully fledged scale and don't have to worry about playing the wrong notes. This way the retuning module also works as a scale filter. We also have a scale filter of course but that's just major, minor and chromatic in all the different keys. This is a way to sort of ease into the idea of using another temperament, another way of dividing the octave into different kinds of spaces. What if I'm not at all interested in any exotic tunings or temperaments and stuff like this? The retuner, is it something for me anyway? Absolutely. For my sake, I'm a very visual learner, so when it comes to learning modes of scales, for instance, and the chord shapes that goes into these, I can absolutely see myself using the retuner as a tool where I'm using the scale notes, stripping everything else out, sort of visually learn myself what does this scale look like, what kinds of chord shapes goes into this and how can I maneuver on the fretboard right here. The next step is obviously to move this scale shape around on all 12 notes and you can change that by going to the box that says E2 in its default position. What does the 12 here in the retuning module represent? We're talking about 12 tone equal temperament normally. 
So this means that we're taking an octave, we're dividing it into 12 equally sized parts and that makes up the basis for our kind of tuning. Here you have the opportunity to actually change that into something else. Everything from 6 to 18. For this to sound really enticing as well, I'm going to change from the Mod Arch acoustic guitar to the Mod Arch pianos instead. And I'm also going to use a sustain pedal. I'm going to change to piano because pitch bends doesn't always make it into this kind of division. Let's see what an octave divided into seven notes would sound like. So now I'm just playing the C major scale here, moving up to eight. So while it is a lot of things that we can do within this retuning module itself, let's look at the last thing in here and this is the import Scala files or keyboard mapping files. Tuning files for all of these parameters that other guys have already set out to do and there are huge resources on the web and I'll uh, link to a few of those in the video description. Let me show you the effect that those have just by going in and loading the first ones that I have in my file here. So with these files, we're not only deciding upon the contents of any scale. If I'm going to build the scale from the relationship of one particular chord, or if I'm going to build it from some mathematical structure, perhaps I'm only interested in using major thirds and, and build from that. I can also decide, am I going to use the black keys on a piano, for instance? Or am I only going to use what would be the C major patterns on the guitar neck? I can also reverse the order in which the notes appear. So the lower I'm playing, the higher it sounds. Everything like this goes into these tuner files or keyboard mapping files. As you've imported any of the files, all of these handles disappear and you have no access to those again. As it is right now, the way to get past this is to reload the retuning module again, if you want to get back to the original state. But you can also use these tuner files directly into some of the VSTs that you're probably already using. Uh, Surge XT is one of those that directly imports these tuning files into them. And when it comes to these tuning files, there are also places online where you can actually make your own tuning files and save them into a folder somewhere on your computer to use. And I'll link to those in the description as well. One more thing that I want to show you is how to use these note handles in a more dynamic way. So we're going to connect to those with either modulators or external controllers and control and change the pitch in real time as we're inputting notes as well. Let's begin. I have my breath controller here coming in on CC2. First of all, I will connect to an arbitrary choice of notes within this retuning circle here like this. And you see that I can control these in real time this way.
kind of a queasy effect. Pretty interesting if you're gonna do special effects. But now I'm connecting my breath controller also to the invert handle of the modulators here which means I get out the exact opposite of what I'm putting in from the invert connector here. And for those, I'm connecting to the other ones in this circle. So half of the note choices are moving in one direction where the other is moving in the exact opposite direction here. <laughs> So I think I have all the things that I wanted to show you about the retuning right now. There are other ways to interact with retuning like the MTS ESP protocol where you sort of branch out and reach multiple plugins on different chains perhaps. But I'll go over that in a separate video. I guess I'll see you later in another video. Bye for now. Thanks. Mm -hmm.